unlike the first series, the second series is based on three books by Colin Dan rather than one. In the Grip of Winter, Fox's Feud, and The Fox Cub Bold. This meant the plot was far less linear and jumped around much more. The series focused on the animals' initial adjustments to life in White Deer Park, Fox and Vixen giving birth to cubs, and a rivalry between the farthing wood animals and a family of blue foxes. This series also clearly covers a much longer period of time than the first, of at least a couple of years, maybe more. Plot. Our first episode is called A Hero's Welcome. It picks up exactly where the last series left off, with the animals being welcomed into the park by the white stag. The stag tells them that they can go where they want, but while they are being welcomed, a sinister-looking fox, watching, mutters to his mate, as long as he's not on my patch. Whistler quickly becomes acquainted with a rather bossy female heron named Speedy, while Weasel is chased by a male weasel named Measley in scenes that closely resemble a Pepe Le Pew cartoon. The squirrels, however, are driven away from the trees by the local red squirrels, and the smaller animals are frightened by the sinister-looking fox, who is named Scarface. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is our main villain for Series 2. Badger and Mole meet Scarface's mate, called Lady Blue. She tells them that they are trespassing, and that this land belongs to the blue foxes. Meanwhile, Kestrel accidentally eats one of the Farthingwood field mice, and the animals quickly realise that it will be hard to maintain the oath without knowing which animals belong to Farthing Wood. Adder eats one of the White Deer Park frogs, which angers Toad, but Owl points out that the oath cannot extend to non-Farthing Wood animals, as they wouldn't be able to eat anything if it did. Weasel is confronted by Scarface, but is able to escape. With so many problems, the animals go to find Fox. Though disappointed that they were not able to fit in, Fox speaks to the stag, and he sets up an area of the park to be designated as Farthing Land, where the oath is still maintained. Scarface and Lady Blue express disgust at the farthing animals being given their own land, and they snobbishly feel that the red foxes are inferior. Adder goes to sleep for the winter, and the rest of the animals begin to prepare for the winter. In the second episode, Winter, we've clearly moved on a few months because we are now in the middle of winter. Many of the animals have gone into hibernation, while others are struggling to find food with snow everywhere and the pond frozen over. Speedy and Whistler find some crayfish which they share with Badger and some of the other animals. Fox and Vixen go hunting and they see Scarface and Lady Blue watching them to see that they stay on farthing land. Vixen confronts them and tells them that the stag didn't mean for them to be kept prisoner on their own land and that they have to hunt on other land or they will starve not listen though, and Lady Blue tells her that her mate is Law in the Park, not the stag. Meanwhile, Weasel tricks the squirrels by stealing their nuts and selling them back to them in exchange for shelter. Damn, I didn't think it was possible, but Weasel is even worse a character in this series. Badger falls into a ditch while walking in the snow and is taken in by the warden. Fox sets up a search party to look for Badger, but they find nothing. The stag leaves out some hay from the warden for the smaller animals. Badger wakes up in the warden's cottage and quickly becomes acquainted with his cat, but struggles to adjust to the warden's care for him. Badger asks Cat to go out and tell his friends that he is okay. He meets Mole, who is overjoyed with this news, but then Kestrel swoops down and stabs Cat with her claws, as she thought Cat was attacking Mole. Cat collapses on the ground, bleeding heavily. In the third episode, Survival, Cat is cared for by Vixen, and Mole thanks him for giving them the news about Badger. Cat is very angry at Kestrel for attacking him, and blames the oath. Fox and Vixen, meanwhile, are still struggling to find non-farthing wood animals to eat. ...thrown back on Weasel by throwing nuts at her. Fox then gives her a telling off for causing so much trouble. Good for him. It's about time someone did. Meanwhile, Scarface kills Mrs. Vole, and Vole accuses Fox of killing her. Weasel shows up and tells them that it was Scarface. Vixen points out that she was on farthing land and should have been safe do something about Scarface, but he says that he doesn't want to make things worse. Field Mouse says that he thinks the oath is meaningless now. Badger is let out back into the wild, and he returns home in a rather bad mood, as no one came to meet him on his way back. He suggests later that they all go live in the Warden's cottage. Fox tells him that he's gone mad, and quite frankly I agree. Badger returns to the cottage, but the Warden throws him out, and Cat tells him that he doesn't belong here. He then tries to attack Kestrel in an act of revenge, but Badger saves her.
Vole is once again confronted by Scarface, and she mentions that she saw him eating Mrs. Vole, but lies and tells him that she didn't tell anyone this. Scarface bites her arm and tells her that he wants her to spy on Fox for him. Badger comes back and apologises. He suggests that they scavenge for food in a nearby farm, but this still makes Scarface angry as he had the same idea. In the fourth episode, New Enemies, Scarface attacks Weasel for not telling him about the raids on the farm, despite Weasel insisting that she didn't know about it. Weasel suggests to Measley that they stay off Farthingland so that she won't know anything about Fox and therefore can't tell Scarface. Measley thinks she is being stupid and doesn't want anything to do with her as he wants to live. Meanwhile, Mole meets a female Mole while the Warden is taken away in an ambulance. Fieldmouse tells them that Vole is dead and Fox doesn't know what to do without the Warden. They go for another scavenge at the farm, but on the way back they find one of the deer has been shot by a poacher. The Farthingwood animals watch various areas of the park for the poachers. Fox spots them and goes to warn the stag. The deer run for it, but one of them is still shot. Fox decides to stop the poachers by luring them to the pond which is starting to melt. Fox, Vixen, Badger, Owl and Whistler all put together a plan to watch over the pond and Kestrel tries to get Weasel to help but she won't as she's too scared of what Scarface might do to her. Fox gets the poachers to chase him towards the pond where he is ambushed by Scarface but then both the poachers and Scarface fall into the ice and Fox escapes. Vixen tells Fox that she's going to have cubs but the rest of the smaller animals also die off screen at some point during this episode. In episode 5, A Joke Backfires, Fox decides to stop the food raids as spring is very close now. But for some reason, the other birds decide not to tell Owl. When she finally finds out, she becomes very depressed that no one has told her, and she decides to leave the park. The poachers return and kill one of Scarface's cubs. Scarface blames Fox for the death of his cub, and gives Weasel a message to give to Fox that he will pay him back. When she passes this message on to Fox, he becomes very suspicious of Weasel. Owl, meanwhile, believes that their fox was the fox that was killed, and blames herself as she didn't warn him about the poachers. Meanwhile, Lady Blue gives birth to two cubs. She names the male one Ranger. The stag plans to have the herd of deer chase the poachers to try and get rid of them for good, and tells her that Fox hasn't been killed, and apologises for not telling her that the air raids had stopped. Vixen gives birth to four cubs, two males named Bold and Friendly, and two females named Dreamer and Charmer. Badger begins to worry about his friend Mole, and becomes very depressed. Geez, that's like twice in this series already. The stag's plan to get rid of the poachers works well, and soon after the warden returns, and Fox leads the poachers right to his cottage where he arrests them, bringing a triumphant end to the episode. Spring has arrived in the next episode, home is where the heart is. Adder has woken from hibernation, and Vixen is teaching her cubs to hunt. Bold, however, seems more interested in showing off. Mole's mate shows up and tells them that Mole died in the winter, but that the two young she has with her one of which is named Mossy, are his. Whistler also shows up to tell them that Toad has disappeared. Toad's homing instinct have taken hold of him again, and this time they seem to have put him into some kind of a trance so that he doesn't even seem to know what he's doing. Scarface begins to spy on Vixen caring for her cubs, but Weasel scares him off by singing. She tells Vixen about Scarface, but she doesn't believe her. Adder shows up to tell them about Toad, so Kestrel and Whistler go after him and find that him and a female Toad named Paddock have been captured in jam jars by a young boy. Weasel is annoyed at Vixen for not believing her and considers betraying them to Scarface. Meanwhile, Scarface continues to spy on the cubs, but this time Owl spots him and is able to scare him off. He returns to his earth and tells Lady Blue that he thinks Vixen's cubs are better than hers. Meanwhile, Whistler finds Toad and Paddock, and he is able to free Paddock by dropping her from a great height. He takes Toad to the Warden to free him. The experience also seems to have caused Toad to fall in love with Paddock. Lady Blue sees Vixen's cubs and becomes jealous. He tells her that she will have trouble with Bold, as he has more courage than sense. At the start of the next episode, The Feud Begins, Fox finds that Dreamer has been killed. He blames Scarface and suggests that Weasel might know something about it. Weasel tells him about how Scarface has been trying to get her to spy on him, while Bold suggests that they teach Scarface a lesson. Fox tries to tell him otherwise, but Bold does not listen and wanders into Scarface's land. Meanwhile, Badger meets Mossy and mistakes him for Mole. Vixen asks Mossy to play along to spare Badger the pain of Mole's death. Is it me, or is Badger starting to act a bit foolish? Bold meets Ranger and tells him that they can still be friends even if their parents are fighting. 
Suddenly, Scarface shows up and takes Bolt prisoner. Adder sends Hare back to tell Fox about this, while Weasel meets Measley for the first time in months, and he unintentionally suggests that they tell the Great White Stag about Bold. Meanwhile, Fox sets off to rescue Bold with Friendly and Kestrel, but unknown to them, Bold has already escaped by tricking the Blue Fox guarding him. He returns to Farthingland, where he is horrified to learn that his father has gone after him. Meanwhile, the Stag tries to reason with Scarface and reminds him of how Fox helped to get rid of the poachers. Scarface won't listen, but tells him that they don't have Bold, so they are forced to leave. They return home, where everyone cheers Weasel for getting the stag to come along, and Fox is furious at Bold for causing so much trouble. He tells him that from now on he will do as he is told, and that he will stay where he can be seen. But Bold decides he can't live like this, so he leaves the park. Uh, no one tried to stop him or anything. Episode 8 is titled, Like Father, Like Son. Bold has left the park, and he is looking for food. He meets a crow who warns him about the humans, but Bold doesn't seem to care. He kills a pheasant and takes it into an empty set, which turns out to belong to a female badger named Shadow. She warns him about the human that owns the pheasants, but once again Bold doesn't seem to care, and he even kills a pheasant for her as thanks for using her set. Back at the park, the female hare is killed by Scarface. Fox is angry, but Vixen points out that the hares were not on farthing land. Fox realises that this trouble won't stop until Scarface is dead, but that he also has to kill him in such a way that the Blue Foxes won't know it was him. He asks Weasel and Measley to give Adder a message. He who rids me of the Blue Fox will be doing me a great service. But due to Weasel and Measley's stupidity, they get the message slightly wrong and Adder kills a Blue Fox named Bounder rather than Scarface. Meanwhile, Charmer and Ranger start to become better acquainted, which begins a subplot clearly taken right out of Romeo and Juliet. Bold finds Shadow stuck in a trap that the farmer has set up for him, and he is able to free her just in time, but he injures his eye in the process. Back at the park, Fox is horrified to learn of Adder's mistake, and plans to attack Scarface before he tries to get revenge. Vixen fears that Fox is starting to sound more like Scarface. She also wonders how Bold is doing. Unknown to her, Bold has been shot in the leg. At the start of the ninth episode, Narrow escapes, Crow finds Bold injured, and he asks for help. The Crow laughs at the idea of helping a fox, but changes his tune when he finds out that he is the son of the famous Farthing Fox. At the park, Fox sets up a watch for Scarface around their land, and some of the other animals decide Weasel and Measley must be punished for their mistake. Weasel meets Charmer while she is on watch, but Friendly catches them talking, so he decides to tell Fox. Meanwhile, Ranger suggests that Scarface kill Adder as revenge for the death of Bounder, and leave Fox out of it. Scarface isn't so sure, but he tries to kill Adder anyway. The earth, but not before Scarface has bitten off her tail. Shadow and Crow try to nurse Bold back to health by bringing him food, and Bold realises that the Farthingwood Oath still lives on in him, even though he has left the park. However, he doesn't like the idea of depending on others, so he goes off on his own again. After failing to catch a chicken from a farm, Crow suggests that he try the town, where there is a lot to scavenge. Bold sets off for the town, presumably the same town we saw at the end of the first series. He arrives at the start of the next episode, Shadows. He and Crow begin scavenging and sharing what they find. Back at the park, Scarface is trying to stake out Adder in her hole in the earth, and Weasel and Measley are dropped into the pond as punishment for giving Adder the wrong message. Nice to see Weasel getting her comeuppance at last. Friendly tells Fox about Charmer and Ranger, and at first, Fox is furious with Charmer, but eventually, Vixen convinces him to at least meet Ranger. Damn! Fox has become a bit of an asshole lately. Meanwhile, Badger appears to have gone mad, as he thinks he's still in Farthing Wood. Mossy goes to get Fox, and Fox apologises to Badger for being unkind to him, before Badger peacefully passes away. Back in the town, Bold meets a Vixen named Whisper, but she does not seem interested in him. What's with all the foxes in this town? She introduces herself to him, and the two go hunting together. She invites him back to her earth, but Bold says he must go find his friend Crow. Later, when Bold tells Crow about this, Crow says he doesn't need his help anymore. So the following night, Bold goes back with Whisper to her earth. He tells Whisper who his father is, and she says she is honoured to know him. Bold starts to wonder if he will ever be more than just his father's son. Fox meets Ranger and asks him what he would do if his father attacked Charmer. Ranger tells him that he wouldn't fight for him, but he also wouldn't fight against him. 
I'm not sure if that's really answering the question, but Fox seems satisfied. In the 11th episode, A Time of Reckoning, a dog named Rolo starts barking at Whisper in her earth. They try to scare him off, but he turns out to be friendly. He helps them to remake a hole in the wall to Whisper's earth, which had been filled in the day before, and he lets them eat some of his food. He tries to help them hunt, but he makes too much noise and scares the rats away. Whisper tells Bold that she is carrying his cubs, and that she wants them to be born in White Deer Park, and also that she only took Bold as her mate because of his father. Now, if I were Bold, I would have left Whisper at this point for being so selfish, but Bold is more loyal, and agrees to take her back to the park. They say goodbye to Rollo, and they set off. After a day or so, Bold collapses, completely exposed, and two hunting dogs attack him. He is saved by Rollo and Crow, who have come to bring him food. Bold realises that he is only still alive because of all the different animals that have helped him, and the oath of Farthing Wood. Back at the park, Vixen catches Lady Blue on Farthing Land, and they have a brief fight. In the penultimate episode of Series 2, Blood is Thicker Than Water, Scarface organises an attack on Farthing Land with all the blue foxes. Ranger warns Friendly about this, and Hare warns some of the other animals. Fox has everyone meet at his earth, with the exception of the rabbits who don't listen and hide in their own earth. Everyone hides in Fox's earth. Friendly accuses Charmer of treason, and that she is the reason Scarface is attacking. Meanwhile, Bold is now very weak, but still thankful for all the creatures that have helped him, and says, it's as though I've never left the park. He meets Shadow on the way back for one last time, and he thanks her. Back at the park, Ranger finds Fox's earth, and plans to tell his father that it is empty, but Scarface catches them before he can do so. Fox challenges Scarface to a one-on-one -on -one fight to the death. Scarface appears to have the fight won when he grabs Fox around the neck, but Fox scratches his back leg and pins him to the ground. He lets him go, however, as he is not up to killing. The blue foxes leave with Scarface injured. On a lighter note, Weasel takes Owl, Whistler and Speedy to the White Stag and has him explain that she only gave Adder the wrong message by mistake and not intentionally, and he has the three of them apologise for dumping her and Measley into the pond. In the final episode of Series 2, Reconciliation, Bold and Whisper arrive back at the park and Whisper goes to get food. But while she's away, Bold crawls away to die. In the park, Scarface is clearly back to full health as he kills the female rabbit, and Fox is angry at himself for not killing Scarface when he had the chance. Adder, however, sees to that soon after, as revenge for biting off her tail. Just before dying, Scarface vows he will be avenged. The news of Scarface's death quickly spreads round the park, and the Farthingwood animals celebrate. Watching this as an adult, I am oddly reminded of the reaction to Osama bin Laden's death, which is probably the only time I've ever known people to celebrate a death, but I digress. Whisper meets Charmer and Friendly, and she tells them what has happened to Bold. Meanwhile, Lady Blue and Ranger mourn the loss of Scarface, and Charmer asks Ranger to forgive Adder. Fox and Vixen also have to deal with death as they meet Bold outside the park. Fox just has the chance to apologise for being hard on him, and says his cubs will be fine before Bold dies, in by far the saddest moment of the series. On a happier note, Fox gives Ranger his blessing, and he hopes that the union of Ranger and Charmer will bring peace to the two families. Now let's move on to the new characters we were introduced to during this series. Cat. Quite a proud but friendly character. On the surface he seems a little lazy, as he seems happy to have the Warden do everything for him. But he still ventures out into the snow to tell Mole that Badger is alright. He is the only character who questions the oath, as it is the reason he is attacked and part of me thinks that he tried to convince Badger to stay in the wild because he wanted the Warden all to himself. So he's certainly not an all-round good character. One thing that's interesting about him is that he has the name of his species as his name, despite the fact that he is not the first character of that species to appear on the show. That was Tom in the first series, and I think this makes him the only species-named character on the show where this is the case. Scarface. This guy really scared me as a kid. His sinister, no-mercy attitude towards the Farthingwood animals, his presence really helped to show who truly was brave among the Farthingwood animals. And he actually kills a number of well-established characters, showing that once again, this show isn't scared to kill anyone off. There is even a little sadness about his death, even though he's a villain. He leaves us asking the question, did he really deserve to die for what he did? Lady Blue. The villain's mate, the sidekick in a way, that's not to say that Lady Blue can't hold her own, as we see from the threat she gives Badger in the first episode, and the fight she has with Vixen. 
When I first saw the show, I felt sure that she only wanted Scarface for protection. But her reaction to his death certainly showed that, however badly he treated her, and he did treat her pretty badly at times, she still loved him deep down. It also leads into the, the king is dead, long live the, in this case, queen. It's a shame, therefore, that she isn't in the next series. Measly. Pretty annoying, a total wimp, foolish and somewhat unreliable. I can't think of a better mate for Weasel. The relationship between the two of them takes a lot of interesting turns during the series. First Measley wants Weasel, but Weasel doesn't want him. Then tables turn, as Weasel needs Measley's help, but he's too much of a coward. It's like both are as bad as each other, so they deserve each other. It's also interesting how having two annoying characters actually works well. I was nothing more than annoyed by Weasel in the first series, but seeing both Weasel and Measley on screen playing off one another actually made for some good comedy. Mossy. There isn't much to say about this character that I haven't already said about Mole. He has an identical personality, voice and appearance to his father. In fact, he is so much the same character, I kind of wonder why the writers had Mole die in the first place. What's the point of having a character die if you are just going to replace him with an identical character? Maybe they thought it was unrealistic to have Mole survive the winter. Speedy. The character wasn't introduced in the first series because she's actually a far more interesting character than Whistler. Her relationship with Whistler is very much dominated by her, with her constantly telling him what to do. Perhaps the idea of us knowing Whistler first was to get us to sympathise with him. I never really saw it that way myself, though, since Whistler never actually stands up for himself. At least, not in this series. Speedy is well named due to her fast talking, which never seems to stop. There is even one point when Al asks Whistler to gag her with a pine cone, which makes for a good bit of comedy. Mostly a comic relief character, but she does speak about problems the animals are having once or twice. The Great White Stag. The overlord of the park, who tries to keep peace between the red and blue foxes. I liked the way that he acted very much as the peacemaker throughout, and never appeared to be on one side or the other. He also acted as the narrator for this series after it had been Badger in the first, the Warden. A rather anonymous figure who, like the White Stag, tries simply to keep the peace. He is the one human in the series who is given some kind of identity. He is also the one all-round good human in the show, clearly showing that not all humans are bad. Friendly. His name is pretty ironic, as he's really not that friendly. He stirs up a lot of trouble between the red and blue foxes. He looks up to Bold quite a lot, so it's a shame that they don't actually spend more time together. He probably has the most loyalty to his father of any of the cubs. At times, however, he comes across as sucking up to his father, Bold. By far the most developed of the cubs. He is well named, as he is not only brave, but also very determined to be independent. He actually won't allow other animals to help him in some cases, as he does not wish to be dependent on others. He also won't take warnings from others about dangers. This is understandable after the way his father treated him, but in this experience he learns the real purpose of the Farthingwood Oath. While he sometimes doesn't like the way he's compared to his father, it's clearly meant as a compliment. While he does take value in not letting other animals down or being in their debt, his real downfall is his own pride. If he had allowed Whisper to feed him, or he had just gone back into the park, he might well have survived. His death at the end of the series showed us that once again, this show wasn't scared to kill anyone off. Even right at the end of the series, when you might have expected a happier ending. Charmer. She appears for most of the series to be the only Red Fox that actually wants peace between the two families. She comes across as a fairly innocent figure, who exposes a lot of weaknesses and flaws in her father. So her relationship with her father is very different from Friendly's. Outside of her relationship with Ranger, she doesn't really add that much to the story, though. Ranger. Much like how the Warden showed us that not all humans were bad, Ranger showed us that not all blue foxes were bad. Although technically it was actually Bold who first suggested that they could be friends, Ranger was the one who put the idea of the red and blue foxes being friends into practice. Given that his father was more than capable of killing him if he felt displeased with him, this is actually pretty brave of Ranger, especially since, unlike Charmer, he would have been expected to fight. It's a shame, really, that there were not more blue foxes like him. Crow. The first friend outside of White Deer Park that Bold makes. Part of me felt his friendship with him was a little shallow, as he only really helped Bold when he found out who his father was. 
But another part of me thinks that this is because he didn't know that the Farthingwood animals were real until he met Bold. There is also a little bit of a comedic tone to the way he talks, with his voice sounding like a real crow at times, with him repeating himself from time to time, and with his catchphrase, Thank your lucky stars. Shadow. She acts much like a mother to Bold, watching over everything he does, but unlike a real mother, she never tells him off or becomes angry with him. Even when Bold is shot in the leg, after she warns him about the humans, she merely nurses him back to health. Maybe this is because Bold saved her life shortly after meeting her, although, to be fair, it was only because of him that the trap was there in the first place. Shadow is a very soft character who helps Bold only when he wants help. I wouldn't call her a friend of Bold's as much as she is a guardian. Whisper. One thing I never understood about her was what she was doing living in the town in the first place. But anyway, Whisper is a more inconsistent character than Shadow, sometimes showing love and care for Bold by helping him hunt for food and trying to save him when they return to the park, but at other times she appears to have no love for him at all, admitting that she only took him as her mate because of his father, and demanding that they return to White Deer Park despite him being very weak. Overall, the only good things she does are either superficial or to rectify what was her own fault anyway. It's a shame, therefore, that she's in the next series as well. Rollo. To be honest, this character just annoyed me for the most part. He was a fairly hopeless character at what he did, and was also rather foolish. I don't really know why Bold and Whisper bothered with him. I guess they just felt sorry for him. He does do one brave thing towards the end of the series by saving Bold from some wild dogs. Paddock. For the most part, she only serves as Toad's mate during the spring and nothing more. But one thing she does do is she's the only person to take pity on the weasels after they give Adder the wrong message. So I say good for her. Dreamer. The other one of Fox's cubs who dies fairly soon after being born. Her death, the cause of which is left unknown, is the reason the feud between the red and blue foxes begins. The Blue Foxes. I've already talked about most of the real characters in this group. The rest simply serve as additional minions to Scarface, but don't actually come across as very threatening, as we never hear them say anything or see them kill anyone. On a quick side note, blue foxes don't exist in real life. The closest thing we have are silver foxes. Now I'd just like to talk briefly about a few of the farthing wood animals that I felt a little differently about after this series. Weasel. While I still found her annoying, she actually did work as comic relief in this series, and also displayed some loyalty towards Fox by not telling Scarface about any of his plans, and helping him out when Bold went missing. She didn't do her stupid laugh as much, or joke as much in this series. There were still times when she was pretty selfish and mean-spirited though, like when she stole the squirrel's nuts, or when she tricked Badger while he was feeling rather depressed. Kestrel. I really didn't think of her as a character in the first series, in this series, however, she actually emerges as a character by developing a strong friendship with Owl, Whistler and Speedy, as well as helping them to catch the weasels. Before that, she had a major guilt trip by killing one of the Farthing Wood mice and attacking Cat, which later causes Cat to try for revenge. The animation on her also improves, showing more emotion in her face. It's a shame, then, that she's strangely absent from the third series. Fox consistent from the first series, leading the farthing wood animals in fights against some of the poachers and the blue foxes. One thing in this series that seems rather unlike him, though, is his instant prejudice against Ranger simply because he's a blue fox. This seemed a bit misguided to me, and not like him at all. So now I'd like to talk about some of the aspects of this series that I didn't like. Like I said, I didn't really understand the point of Mole dying. If you're going to have a character die, then bring in another character right away, they need to be different in some way, so that there is a reason for the change. I also didn't like the fact that Mole died off-screen. For such a major character, he deserved a proper send-off. I've also mentioned that I didn't like Fox's prejudice against Ranger. It seemed very inconsistent with the character up to that point, and his change of heart at the end of the series seemed a bit sudden. There is also a subplot in the final episode, where the animals are trying to cure Rabbit's hiccups. I didn't really understand the point of this, especially since it was the series finale where there were bigger things going on. A lot of the deaths in this series happened off-screen, which seemed a bit cheap to me. 
One thing I found a little bit sketchy about Bold's death was that he went off to die because he felt his job was done. But he knew Whisper was having cubs. Didn't he think they needed a father? I also felt that Badger's suggestion that they all live in the Warden's cottage, and thinking that Mossy was Mole, was rather foolish of him. But maybe that's because he was getting old. I don't know though, it just seemed a bit bizarre to me. The animation in this series is a little better than the first, but there are still a lot of copy and paste jobs. Conclusion. As good as the first series was, this one really played to what I felt the show's strengths were. Unlike the first series, this one had multiple subplots, different issues with different characters, and much more development of characters' relationships with one another. There was only so much additional things that the characters could do while they were in the middle of a journey, but now that they were actually at the park, there was no end to the different possibilities of the things they could have the characters do. We also learn about the legacy of both the journey and the oath of Farthing Wood, and the effect that it has left on animals outside of the park. The show once again showed us that it wasn't scared to kill anyone off, however major a character they might have been. And Bold's death at the end of the series was not only one of the most touching scenes I've ever seen, but also one of the most realistic death scenes I've ever seen. I really liked the fact that this was the way they ended the series, showing kids that life isn't always a happy ending, and that good people die too, and that good people will die too. It's a shame, therefore, that things fall off a little in the third and final series. Join me for the next video, and I'll tell you all about it.